Hey, how you guys doing? My name is Jordan Davis, and I'm really here to I'm here to do an NBA math video. Purpose for this is that there are a lot of um, sites out there that don't have NBA math. I found it really cool to understand accounting and the principles of it, and I'll walk through every adjustment, all the answers, and just pretty much to give you guys a good understanding of this core accounting stuff that you need. So the first problem is we're going to go into the what is the, if the total liabilities are 2,600 and total equity is 2,900, then what is the value of total assets? So we're looking at total assets right now. Now it's important that you get a, you do a T-chart. T-chart's really important because it limits mistakes. You're writing it on paper. You're not staring at a screen all day. It's really helpful. So first thing we're going to do is identify what we're looking for. We're looking for total assets. So put a TA on top of your T-chart. So it should look like... Uh, well, it's a little bit blurry. You see the TA right there, total assets. Just make the T chart. And you look at the total liabilities, which is 2.6, and then the total equity, which is 2.9. So the sum total is 2.6 plus 2.9, 5.5. Your total liabilities plus equity is 5.9. So excuse me, 5.5. And fundamental rule, assets need to equal liabilities plus equity. Liabilities are things are like debt, they kind of like debt you take on that you need that it gives you more of uh, more source of cash to use. If a liability goes up, you have more cash to use because you're like increasing debt, all that stuff, right? So uh, increasing liability is generally good because you're getting more cash to pay off stuff. And equity is stuff for your investors, you're um, basically big equity holders. Like if you get a paid in capital increase, that would go under equity. So we have 5.5 for total liabilities plus equity. And now we need to find out total assets. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. So assets have to be 5.5. That balances out. Make sure the units are correct and put 5.5 5, 5 in there. Just like that. So second question. What is the value for cash? So we have our um, balance sheet. So we need to find what cash is. Now we're given liabilities. We're also given equity. If we add those together, we have you add 2.4 plus 3.7. Use a calculator. Just use a calculator. There's no need to do mental math. Handy dandy calculator. We get 6.1 for 2.4 and 3.7, which is 6.1. Now we have other assets of 3.5. Now, the way we get cash is taking our liabilities plus our equity and subtracting it from our other assets because liabilities plus equity need to equal assets, fundamental rule. 6.1 subtracted point from 3.5 is 2.6, therefore, your cash to balance everything up will be 2.6, 2,600. There you go. Third question. Now, what is the value of equity? Now, value of equity is, is equity is, is basically the money that's going to be to your investors, your equity. It's, it's made up of, your invest, your equity is made up of paid in capital and retained earnings. So, if we have equity, excuse me, if we are looking for equity, we we are going to look at all the changes first. So we're gonna start off with our assets. We have to find the total number of changes so we can account for those changes and figure out how much equity has actually changed. So we start out with cash and we start off with other assets. We start off with total assets, right? We, we do our changes. So if cash increases by 500,000, we're going to add 3.7 plus 0.5. So uh, 3.9 plus uh, 2.3. So other cash has increased, other assets have increased, liabilities have decreased. Cool. Awesome. Now we're just looking for our equity. So 3.7 plus 
3.9 plus 0.3, 4.2. Total assets will give you 8.2. That's our change. 2.4 minus 0.2 is 2.2. And nothing has changed with our equity. Apparently, clear as it is, nothing's changed just yet. So you're going to add 2.2 plus 5.2 to get you 7.4. Now, and by the way, it's 4.2 plus 4.2, which gives you 8.4. Now, we have assets of 8.4, and we have liabilities and equity of 7.4. To find the total equity change, we're going to take the difference between 8.4 and 7.4 because that's the overall change. Now, we've accounted for our changes in our assets and our, our, our cash and our other assets. We've also accounted for changes in our liabilities. Now, to, to, to figure out the total change for the equity, we're going to take the difference between the total assets and the total liabilities plus equity, which is one. And we're going to add that to the equity. So... 1 plus 5.2 is 6.2, and that will be our change for equity. So we're going to put that in there, just like that. Question number four, what are our total assets? Make our cheat chart. It's always important to make a cheat chart. So intuitively speaking, if we borrow 55000 from a bank, our cash will increase by 55K because, sorry. Because if our cash increases by fifty five thousand, um, we're gonna have, if our debt, excuse me, if our bank loans increase by fifty five thousand, we'll have more cash on hand to do whatever we want. So that's that's why liabilities are good sometimes. They're generally good sometimes. So we have fifty five thousand in total assets, and then we bought fourteen thousand dollars worth of supply on credit. Now, manufacturing supplies would be considered an asset, right? But since we're not purchasing using cash. That's why um, there won't be a fourteen thousand also on the uh, the credit the cre the credits. Well, there will be a fourteen thousand on the credit side, but we're only looking for total assets. So we have fifty five thousand that we borrowed, which means that the other side will be up by uh, the credit side will be up by fifty five thousand, and the assets that will be up by fifty five thousand. Also, if we buy fourteen thousand dollars worth of supplies on credit, our assets will be up by fourteen thousand, and our credit side will be up by fourteen thousand in liabilities. Now, since it's only asking for total assets, all we need to do is add the 55 plus the 14. And if they would have asked for what is the total liabilities, it would be the same thing because we're, it's um, these things work and they like inverse relationships. If, if borrowing from a bank increases your um, liabilities up, it also increases your assets up in cash. Same thing with manufacturing supplies on credit. If we, if we get... Um, fourteen thousand dollars worth of supplies on credit. Our credit and liabilities and accounts payable will go up, and also our um, inventory will go up. So total assets would be sixty nine thousand. Cool, cool, almost there. So, question number five: Where is our total equity? So remember, always write it up. Always write a T chart out. It's very important that you write a T chart out. It, it limits the mistakes. It's easier on the eyes, and it's just a better, better way to intuitively understand the thought processes. So looking at total equity. So immediately here we can we can get rid of some things, stuff that doesn't affect equity. For example, purchase of an equipment for forty three thousand dollars in cash that won't affect equity. Receiving a payment of eleven thousand dollars owed by a customer um wouldn't wouldn't be considered equity let me, let me let's walk through why right so it'll be purchased equipment for forty three thousand dollars in cash that's going to affect pp and e right pp and e is going to be up by forty three thousand cash is going to be down by forty three thousand they both balance out but none of that affects total equity if we receive a payment of eleven thousand dollars owed to a customer that's going to lower accounts receivable, but also raise cash because now we have more spending power. We receive that money from the customer. If we buy $14,000 worth of manufacturing supplies on credit, that's not going to affect equity because if you're buying $14,000 on credit, it's going to raise your liabilities, specifically accounts payable. And then it'll um, 
inventory will increase on the uh, asset side by $14,000. Canceled out. Again, none of the, the above affect equity. However, if you issue $70,000 in stock, that's going to affect equity because it's going to it's going to raise the paid and capital portion of equity. And in equity, you have paid in capital and retain earnings. So if you have seventy thousand dollars in stock, your cash on the asset side will be up by seventy thousand, and your paid in capital on the equity will be up by seventy thousand. So the only changes to equity here would be the issue of stock of seventy k. So we're going to put that here. Last one. Remember, check your work, use your cheat charts. What is the total equity? Last one. Let's make it count. So again, let's go through these by individual, by individual line. So if you pay four thousand owed to a supplier, that doesn't affect equity. It'll affect accounts pay. Actually, it will decrease liabilities by decreasing accounts payable. It will also decrease assets by decreasing the cash because you're paying for the debt that you're paying you're paying off something an outflow of cash so that's not going to affect equity you issue ninety thousand in stock we just talked about this if you issue ninety thousand in stock your cash will go up and your paid in capital will go up so we're going to put a ninety thousand on the right hand side of the t-chart because a right hand side of the t-chart represents the liabilities so if it was um left hand side and you were looking at assets if you're looking at assets, the left-hand side will be the, where you put your assets. Any increases in assets, any decrease in assets will be on the right-hand side. So it, that's how it's easy. That's why you should do it on t charts It's easier to follow. So um, our total equity right now would be $90,000 because we just issued stock. We buy $16,000 worth of equipment. Um, excuse me, manufacturing supplies. Manufacturing supplies is another word for inventory. If you're buying on credit... That means that your accounts payable goes up and also your inventory goes up. But again, this is not affecting total equity, so we don't need to consider this right now. You purchase equipment for $49,000 in cash. That wouldn't affect equity because if you purchase equipment, your PP&E is going up and your cash is going down. They balance out, but again, not affecting equity. You borrow $65,000 from a bank. That's not going to affect equity. Your um, accounts payable, excuse me, your... your uh, um, your long term, your like your debt, your debt would increase, right? You'll get debt of six sixty five thousand, and also your cash will be up sixty five thousand. Again, but that won't affect equity. Now you receive the next one is you receive payment from a customer of ten thousand. Now that's interesting because I feel people get this kind of confused intuitively. If you receive payment owed by a customer, your accounts receivable will go down, and your cash will go up because you have more cash spending. You have more spending power when you collect it. Last one, you bought $17,000 worth of manufacturing supplies on credit. This wouldn't affect equity because you're buying inventory. Manufacturing supplies is another word for inventory, right? So you're buying um, $17,000 worth of inventory. Your accounts payable is also going by $17,000. So they have balanced out. So the, really the only adjustment you need to make here is $90,000. Put that in there. All right. And making sure we have everything correct. So we have... Five, uh, five thousand five hundred twenty, and then twenty six hundred sixty two hundred sixty nine thousand. Get that up. Um, seventy thousand. It's ninety thousand. Let me submit it. Hundred percent. So, um, this I basically just want to give. This is the purpose of just helping people out. I know MBA math is very difficult. I know it's hard to walk through, especially when you have nobody there, but um, this is basically how to do it um, piece by piece. The next thing we're going to talk about is the balance sheet. That's going to be our next quiz or our next assignment, but that's all for now. Thank you. I appreciate it. Stay, stay tuned.